Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to be testing and using the Edelrid Dual Squared Single Rope Assisted Belay Device and comparing it to the Black Diamond Pilot. There are loads of different types of belay devices on the market and what you choose really goes down to your personal preference and the style of climbing that you do. But generally, let's split it into two categories. There are belay devices designed for double ropes and belay devices designed for single ropes. Double ropes, I'm thinking something like the Black Diamond ATC or the DMM Pivot, and you can put two ropes into them. Stuff like the Dual Squared and the Pilot, well, they're only designed for single ropes. That means that the the scope of the belay device is limited a bit. If you've got a single rope one, then you're gonna be looking at doing sport climbing, maybe outdoors or indoors in a climbing wall. They aren't so good for abseiling. In fact, some of them aren't recommended to abseil, and it does limit your use because if you just take one rope, it means you can't really do stuff like multi-pitches or alpine climbing. So if you sport climbers out there still listening and interested in the dual squared, here's the initial impressions. It feels weighty and solid in your hand, and it should be because it's made of stainless steel, which really helps with the durability of the device, as does the lack of any moving parts. It takes 8.9 to 11 millimeter ropes, but with all these devices, if you have a rope towards the end of either of those spectrums, so very thin or very thick, the device tends to not work as well, and that's the same for the dual squared. Somewhere in the middle is its sweet spot. Now this is an assisted braking device, which means exactly as it sounds. It helps the belayer to brake the climber. So when they're falling off or when they're resting on the rope, the device does a lot of the work for you. Now obviously you should never let go of the brake rope at any time, never just trust the device. But as you can see in this example, I've given myself a bit of slack and the device will hold the climber in place. I don't need to put much effort in at all. Now, of course, there are other assisted braking devices and I mentioned, well, I should mention the Gree Gree, which is the granddaddy of them all. The problem is with something like that is it's quite a complicated machine almost, especially with the lowering functions and the giving slack. With a device which is more tubular, like the Dual Squared, a beginner or someone less experienced can pick this up once they've learned how to belay on an ATC and the assisted braking just gives an extra level of safety. So that's good if you're a climber and you're getting a little bit nervous about your belayer. So let's talk about belaying. How do you give slack with this thing? Well, it's easy to set up. You simply take a bite of the rope and thread it through the hole in the bottom so it matches the loop on the bottom of the device. The lead rope section, that goes upwards towards the climber, obviously, and that comes out the top. And the braking rope, well, that runs along this little runnel and comes down the side here. You orientate it facing away from you, so the brake rope is coming away from your waist. Now, we've used this Edelrid carabiner here today because that's the one I've got. But as I said earlier, you can buy this with belay set. And carabiners, similar to this black diamond one, we have this little lever to stop the carabiner moving around on your belay loop. That is the preferred method and carabiner to use for any belay device. There are two main methods for giving slack. You can either hook your braking hand thumb into the thumb loop lift the device up slightly and the other hand pulls out the rope. Alternatively, you can feed the rope out as you would do with any normal device. This method is a bit more grabby and if you need to give a big chunk of slack in order to make a clip, it can be trickier. Also, the device tends to struggle a little bit with thicker, fluffier ropes when using this method. So for me, it's all about that thumb. So how does it feel when I'm actually using it? Well, honestly, it feels nice. It takes a little bit of getting used to as it's a different position with that thumb hooked through the front. However, it's more intuitive for me than something like the Mamu Smart, similar to that Black Diamond Pilot we'll talk about in a minute. So once you get used to that method of giving slack, it's super intuitive, really easy, and certainly far better than something like a Grigri if you're new to a Grigri. It takes a while to learn that system. And in terms of top roping, well, Vini 123, as you've been taught, exactly the same as any ATC, with the added bonus of the assisted braking if you need it. Mm -hmm. 
So what's the joule squared like for lowering duties? Well, in a similar way to giving slack, there are actually two main methods that you can lower a climber off. The first one is using that thumb loop. You hook a thumb through, one hand on the brake rope, and never let go of the brake rope. It doesn't need to be said, but just don't let it go, especially when you're lowering. You put your thumb in and you tilt the device sort of forwards and slightly backwards and find the biting point on the device and the climber will be lowered to the ground. Now that method does work, but I find it a little bit grabby sometimes, especially when there's a bit of a weight difference between the B layer and the climber. The method that I prefer is you put your thumb on the back, your fingers inside, and you simply tilt it backwards a little bit. Now I find this easier because it's, look, it's a bit like a throttle on a motorbike. It's just, you just twist and you can feel the moment where the climber starts to go down. And it's super easy just to let it go back again the other way to slow them down. This is a personal preference thing. Neither of the methods are bad, but I prefer thumb and finger lower to the big thumb and lower. So should you buy an Everid dual squared belay device? Well, really, it depends if you're a sport climber, doesn't it? I mean, if you're using a single rope, sport climbing crags or indoor gyms, then something like this is going to be ideal for you. If you do a multiple variety of other climbing disciplines, then maybe look at something a bit more versatile. The dual square feels intuitive to use. And certainly if you're a climber who's been climbing for a while and using different devices, well, this is very straightforward in terms of setting it up and immediately using it. Of course, always read the instruction manual because there are some things you want to avoid. For example, you don't want to hold it open by pushing your thumb up all the time because if the timer then takes a fall, it's going to go through the device quickly. So do read that instruction manual to make sure you're using it safely. Now let's compare it to the Black Diamond Pilot because on the face of it, they're pretty similar. They're both tubular style devices, no moving parts, made with bomber material. Now the Black Diamond Pilot, we tested this about a year ago and I liked at the time that thumb catch. However, the dual squared I do think is an upgrade. It just feels better when you sink your thumb into it, more solid, more secure and easier to give out slack. When it comes to lowering, well, I, I prefer the BD Pilot, actually. I find the biting point easier to find on this device compared with the Dual Squared, but maybe I just need a little bit more time using this one. There's a bit of difference in thicknesses of rope designed for each device. The BD Pilot, well, that goes up to 10.5, whereas the Dual Squared goes to 11. However, at the other end of the spectrum, 8.7 millimeters on the Pilot and 8.9 millimeters on the Dual Squared. So really, we're talking millimeters here. And as I said, any ropes at the extremities of that spectrum, you're gonna struggle anyway. So I wouldn't really take that into too much consideration. Price-wise, the Dual Squared is cheaper than the Pilot by about 10 euros at the moment on the Epic TV shop. So if cost is a factor, well, this is the baby you're looking at. So would I buy a dual squared? Honestly, probably not, but that comes down to my type of climbing. For alpine and multi-pitch stuff, I've got a black diamond guide plate, which I need for that style of climbing. And for single pitch stuff with a single rope, well, I tend to use a grigri. And that's just because I always have done, and also it's better in rigging situations. Let's say I'm filming a route for Epic TV, something like that. However, if I was just a sport climber, then it's hard to see why you wouldn't buy something like a dual squared. It's safer than a basic ATC because of the assisted braking. You give out slack easily, you can lower easily, it just works really well. Now, which type of device you should buy, I recommend trying a few, especially if you're new to the tubular assisted braking game. Try some out, see which one works for you. But at the moment, on the battle of the tubular devices, the dual squared, it's right up there in my opinion. So what do you think? Do let me know in the comments below if you like this device, if you've used it, or if you've seen any problems with it. And there's links down below in the description for everything that we've been chatting about today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.